Greetings viewer, Chris from Chris Country, here. Back at you with another video. Uh, today, I'm going to give a video on, basically a diagnosis video, of uh, if your computer is not powering on at all, or if your computer is powering on, but you're not getting what I refer to as a video signal, but in layman's terms, your computer comes on, but nothing's happening, on your monitor, at least. Um, We'll be using my HP kind of as the prop again. My computer works. Everything on it works. So I really can't properly show you what it's going to be doing if um, you're having these type of problems. But I can at least give you a general rundown of what to look for, what to watch out for, things like that. So here we go. Okay, so what I'm dealing with a computer that isn't powering on, the first step I usually do is check the obvious. You want to make sure that you plug in. Make sure that you're plugging into the wall. Um, I usually like to just kind of take the plug and plug it into a different outlet. See if that, see if the problem lies with the outlet. The next stop I make is at the power supply itself. Now, a lot of HP power supplies, OEM power supplies, and even newer power supplies have what I refer to as a test light. Nine times out of ten, it's going to be a green light, but it can be a different color. Not all power supplies do have like th three stages of lights, which I'll explain here in a second, but most of them do. If your light is steady on, it tells you at the very least you have power coming in. But nine times out of ten, it also means that your power supply is in good shape, everything's functioning normally, and things like that. Basically, green means good power supply. Now, I say nine times out of ten because... While I haven't dealt with it yet, I have heard of a case where once in a while, you'll have a steady green light, but there's something going on with the power supply that makes it not power on the computer. But again, this is very rare, but, you know, never say never. Now, this HP will do it, and a lot of the newer power supplies will do it. If your light's flashing, it tells you, yes, you're receiving power, but there's a problem with the power supply, and it will not power on the computer. Some power supplies will flash if it means to tell you there's a problem with the circuitry and for safety reasons the computer won't power on because it's developing like the, it's sensing like a short circuit or a problem with the circuitry but usually if I see a flashing a flashing light it tells me there's a problem within the power supply itself. And lastly if your light's not on it indicates one of two things. Either A, you're not receiving power at all, which is why I say check the obvious first, or it could mean that your power supply is so badly blown that the light's not working. But I, I rarely see the, see this kind of thing happening. Um, now, a lot of slightly older computers, and even computers today, like especially if you build a system for cheap, they do not have power supplies with the test light. One, one thing I usually do, if you, if you turn on your computer, and this fan doesn't spin at all, or it tries to spin, but it kind of like just jerks, that indicates to me a problem with the power supply. Now, if you go through all this and you're thinking the power supply is okay, the next step I make is down here at the motherboard. And what I'll usually do is I'll just do a visual inspection of the motherboard. I make sure that everything's tight. You want to make sure that your RAM is seated, it's not loose. You want to make sure that you're firmly plugged in, make sure that your processor isn't loose, because if your processor or your RAM's loose, it will either not power on at all, or it'll power on, but it won't do much beyond that. And of course, if, you're, if your power supply isn't fully seated, then you're either not going to power on at all, or you're going to get a very nice short going on. Um, after I check all that, the next thing I usually do is I just like to look around here at these capacitors, which are these guys right here. And what I do is I look at the very tippy top of them, the silver part. If these are like, if there's like a large bump, or like it looks like a, a hill, to see when they're good, they're, they're flat, but like it, if it looks like a hill, or they're puffy, or there's even stuff coming out of it, then I refer to it as a blown capacitor. And they, essentially, it means you've got a, the capacitor is failed and it's causing a short in the motherboard. This can, this can have any number of effects. But the key to remember is if you've got a blown capacitor, you have a short in the motherboard. So you can have anything from random blue strings of death 
my computer powering off for no apparent reason, abnormal operation period, to even the computer not powering on worst case scenario. Now, if I could look at these and these all look okay, and everything else looks okay, it doesn't mean that the, the, the motherboard is 100% good to go. You can still have a short or a problem with it and it not be visible. After that, um, the next step I'll look at is what I'll usually do is I'll just start unplugging my components one at a time. You know, I start by unplugging the CD drives, your floppy drives, the hard drive. Um, a lot of the newer video cards might have a hookup for the power supply, things of that nature. I'll just unplug them one at a time and try and power on the computer. Because I don't see it too often, but sometimes for whatever reason, a component that's plugged in will hold a power supply from starting up. But usually the only time you're dealing with this is if you got so much stuff plugged in, the power supply just can't feed everything. Now, the next thing I do, and the, the other thing is, you really, except for older machines that actually have a direct connection from the power supply to the switch, you really can't unplug the motherboard to test it. Because, like here, I'll show you with my XP. If I were to unplug my motherboard, and you remember, keep in mind that my XP does work. If I were to go ahead and unplug my motherboard, and attempt to power it on, Nothing happens. No lights, spinnies, nothing. And of course, I'll still get the light though, but that's because the light only pertains to the power supply. Now for safe safety, I'll go ahead and unplug. And while I'm going to wait a few seconds for the light to come out, and then I'll plug my power supply back in. But the next thing I do is if, if that's not working, the next step I take is I see if I can at least get a donor power supply or like somehow sal go see if I can salvage a power supply from somewhere else to test and verify that the power supply is not the culprit. Um, now when you do this you want to make sure that you have the power supply with the same wattage or greater. Um, in my case my power supply has an, I'm pretty sure you can't read it, but my power supply has an output of 250 watts. So if I were to find a, a loaner power supply for this system it'd be 250 watt or greater. You can always go greater, but you can't go less. If you go less, you're probably going to get a power supply that's too weak to run everything in your computer. Now, in my case, 250 watt is about as low as you can get anyway, so for my computer, it wouldn't be too much of a hassle. But you want to you wanna make sure that your power supply is the same wattage and the same type of connection. In this case, this is an ATX power supply. The connectors look a lot like this. Um, now, correct me if I'm wrong, because I've kind of been out of the loop with the newer computers, but I think this is still pretty much the type of power supply for the computers today. There was an order, there was another power supply back in the day called AT, and um, the way you could tell it was an AT was the power, the power plug for the motherboard was actually split in two, and it was skinnier. It had a, a single row of pins. But, of course, this was like back when Windows 95 first came out. But these days, everything is ATX. So you just want to verify that you have a power supply with the same wattage and the same type of connector. And what I do is usually I'll just, I won't even hard install it into the computer. I'll probably just like put it down here to the side, you know, down to the side. I'll, I'll plug in like the bare essentials, you know, I'll plug in the motherboard, which I'm getting ready to do right now. I'll plug in the motherboard, the hard drive, just like the basics. You want to at least plug in the basics, which in this case would be the motherboard and the hard drive. Um, if the computer still doesn't power on with the test power supply and you know the power supply is good, then that's where I would really strongly suspect that there's something wrong in the motherboard. Sometimes, computers can power on and have different problems. If you go to power on the computer, and there's nothing, you're not having any lights, you're not hearing anything spin up, then you do have um, what I refer to as a no power on. Now, if you power on a computer and you're getting lights, and you're hearing things spin up, but you're not getting anything on your monitor, then that tells me you've either got a blown video card, a problem with your processor, or a problem with your RAM. This, but the old computers, 
um, older, I should say. If your process, if your processor's out, um, you're not going to get anything anyway. Some computers will actually, uh, the BIOS can actually give you like an audible beep if there's a, pro a problem with the processor. But nine times out of ten, if your processor's not in there, you're not going to get anything. Now, if your RAM's not working, like if it's loose or not plugged in, or I think in some case if it's bad. Sorry about that, gang. I, my phone hiccuped while I was shooting. I decided to actually go ahead and pull my RAM so I could kind of show y'all, um, or let y'all hear the sounds that a computer might make if you try and start it up with no RAM. And again, this would cause you to be able to power on the computer, everything would work, but you're not going to get a video signal. So here we go. That's basically what you would hear if your RAM was unplugged. As I was trying to state to you earlier, if your computer's not coming on at all, you're not getting lights, spinning, fans, nothing, then, then I would suspect either, you know, like I said, power supply, motherboard, video card, your biggest suspects. Now, if you're hearing noises like things coming on but you're not getting a video signal then of course your power supply is good but then I would suspect either a problem with your motherboard or a video card but you want to like I said just make sure there's nothing loose and that everything's plugged in make sure your processor is getting tight your RAM is obviously in there and that your video card is in there tight if it all looks good then like I said you're probably looking at some component failure RAM which you might eat, uh, if RAM is bad, it usually would leave like a mark on the RAM stick. You probably see like a char mark or something, and my RAM is good, so that's not a, a, a problem there. You might, like I said, you might see blown, if you see blown capacitors, suspect the motherboard, or you could suspect a video card too. Um, but again, that's just if everything's coming on, but you're not getting the signal. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Hey gang, I forgot to give you a quick tip earlier. If you ever power on your computer and you're not getting any of the strange beeps that would be associated with a no RAM or no processor issue, but you're not getting any video signal either, if you have two video ports on your computer, there's very there is a very quick test you can do to see if your video card is at fault. And you don't even have to open up the side of the computer. Uh, the thing I usually do at least I'll unplug the monitor from whatever port it's on, which is usually the video card, and I'll plug it into the actual onboard video port, um, which in this case is right here. And if you have signal coming out that way, that will tell me that your video card is what's at fault, and that the only thing that really needs to be replaced in that situation is the video card. Um, so there's a quick tip, and I'm going to kick it back to myself so we can finish up the video. Ah, computers and their failures. Um, as you can see, it's it's just kind of, to me, it's just going in the flow, and knowing what to watch out for will help you diagnose what particular component is acting up to make your computer act up. I hope this information was helpful for you all. Again, I am Chris for Chris Country. You can visit me at my Facebook page, Chris Country, or you can also, um, of course, rate, comment, and subscribe, and just keep an eye on my YouTube channel here. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and we will catch you on the next video. See ya.